Welcome to the PSL Podcast, presented by Power Speaks Louder. Help us to educate, empower, and transform lives by the power of words with those around the world. Visit www.powerspeakslouder.com forward slash invest to invest in the lives of people today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the PSL Podcast. I'm sitting here with Ayana. Super excited. Everyone welcome her. She is a part of our PSL team. Um, Ayana is amazing. She's given so much to the organization just by her short time of being here. So she's a part of our team. Um, she does so much for us, and I'm excited. So Ayana has some questions, right? Um, we want to dive in deeper on the topic of being overqualified. It's a lot to unpack, so mm-hmm. we want to take some time to talk about it because, you know, one podcast isn't enough to talk about how you are overqualified for what scares you the most. Because many people may be like, what does that mean, right? Right. <laughs> so it can sound really catchy, but we really want to dive into it. And we have some questions from our team members. Mm-hmm. And I believe a lot of these questions, even though I haven't seen all of them, there may be questions that many people are asking right. when it comes to being overqualified. So. Ayana, we're just going to start this conversation and Mm -hmm. invite everybody in to sit in with us and just talk about it. All right. So the first question we have is, how is someone overqualified? Okay. So I believe being overqualified is, let's first talk about qualified. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe when you are getting ready to do something, there's uh, requirements and there's credentials to check off before you can be available to accomplish it. Right. So to be qualified, if you think about your journey um, and the things that we all go through, adversities of all kinds, depression, fear, failure. I mean, I think many of us think about like the fear of failing. Right. Right. But then we may go and pursue things with fear, but we still slay the giant. Mm. So that's that makes us qualified. You know, there's a barrier that um, we thought was going to stop us and we ended up pushing through it right. and coming out on the other side. That makes us qualified. Mm-hmm. So the fears aren't different. They just look and appear differently. But right. they're all the same. They're all these different roadblocks. And we constantly, daily, just by getting up and saying yes to the things we say yes to, that we accomplish it, we end up, you know, being overqualified and we end up slaying those giants daily. But it's just when new things present itself to us that we tend to think it's different. Right. Yeah. Cool. So the next question is, can you be overqualified for more than one dream? I believe you can. You know, it's, you know, looking at myself, I don't just do one thing. Right. And I don't just have one dream. You know, PSL is something that literally disrupted my life. I had no idea. Like, this is not something I orchestrated on my own. Right. You know, I like stepped into this and walked into it and it constantly reveals itself to me. Mm -hmm. So before Power Speaks Louder presented itself to me, I had my own dreams. I had my own aspiration. And I don't want to make it uh, misleading that this isn't a dream of mine because definitely serving people to this capacity is in some way, shape, or form was a dream I had, but it didn't look like this. Right. But creatively, you know, always had a dream to be a designer, and I I was able to do that. Right. (laughs) Because I was qualified. Mm -hmm. So, you know, through the the books of school and, you know, going through fashion design, and I was able to get an AA degree and, you know, be able to get a job, you know, for a surf and skate brand. Right. So I I was able to go through all these different steps. Mm -hmm. And again, like qualification applies to so many different things. It applies to business. It applies to challenges. It applies to your journey. Right. And when you're going through different um, adversities. But I do believe you can be qualified for many different things. I think people are, I think when you think about it, when you think about dreams, they change all the time. Yeah. So it's not the same dream you had when you're six. You're not going to have when you're 60. It's true. So to say that you're only overqualified for one thing is kind of like, it's it, not true. It's putting yourself in the box. Right. Because we're, we're complex beings. You mm-hmm. know, we can do so many things. Some people may have 10 gifts. One may have five. Right. One may have two. One may have one. But it's like what you do with that gift. Because what I did with my gift multiplied. It right. actually grew exponentially. So I thought I was just a designer. Right. You know what I mean? I thought I was like building shoes and and, and building products. Mm. And now I'm in the business of building people. I think that's a great point to the thing of like what you think your talent is, Mm -hmm. isn't always what it's going to end up being. Right. Like we were talking about this the other day of where 
my love for photography and my love for youth somewhat led me here Mm -hmm. and that when i first started that's not where i thought i would be exactly Mm -hmm. so it just led you into these different paths right but you have to be open and willing you know to discover yourself because life is such a discovery Mm -hmm. and you cannot limit it to one thing because you don't know that part you don't know who you're going to become Mm -hmm. so you have to be overqualified for more yeah because you're not just one thing you can discover multiple things about yourself that you never knew. Right. Do you have any suggestions on how someone can release stress and frustration when delays o- do occur? Hmm. Okay. So this is a perfect example that applied to today. Okay. Because I'm a, I'm, I'm a real time, you know, speaker. Like you, if I tell you, oh yeah, you know, back in, you know, when I was five, it, you, you can't really, really relate to that. Or even if it was like a year ago, like let's talk about right now. Today, I was supposed to record a a video, and um, I actually wanted to do that video. I wanted to have it finished before we started to to speak today on the podcast. Well, it didn't happen that way, okay? Sometimes you come to the the table, and you're ready. You got the cameras and the lights and everything all set up, and you're like, okay, I'm ready. And then you're looking, and then you start to speak, and it's just not that day. Mm. And it can be very frustrating when you had expectations to knock something out, because one, you don't want to be a procrastinator, and, and two, you you just want things to work out the way you envisioned it. Right. Yeah. So one thing I had to think about is today isn't the day. Mm. So then, what can I do that takes my mind off of it not happening the way I thought it should? So then I started preparing for right now. Right. Yeah. So that that's what helped me. So it's really like about being flexible. I think I spoke to you about this recently mm-hmm. about how we set these days and these times. And then when it doesn't happen that way, we get so bent out of shape and we get so discouraged, but we have to take a step back and allow our, ourselves time to think like, okay, wait a minute today. Not may not be the day, right? Because let's be honest with the people yesterday. We were supposed to do this. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to get on, you know, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> the podcast yesterday. Right. Okay. And that time was to actually, work out the technical difficulties Mm -hmm. and just be like, I really want anything we speak about. I want to be transparent. I want you guys to look at B Hunter and Ayana and power speaks louder just as transparent people. We're not here to, um, trick you or to deceive people to make it look like we've been doing this for 20 years because we've only been doing it for three. So we just been (laughs) using our resources. But when I say technical difficulties, I'm not ashamed of that. And I, Ayana just tell the people what I did yesterday. Because I'll let you tell how I dealt with um, a delay. Okay, so yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> yesterday we came, uh, we were here. We only had about an hour and a half, maybe yeah, two yeah. hours at the most, to record this podcast, get everything together. So it was like a, a relearning podcast. So you could tell that B was a little bit frustrated because it's like mm-hmm. we had to figure out different ways to do things. And the original way, which was the easiest way, wasn't working. Mm-hmm. So it's like now you got to go through all these difficult ways. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of it, we decided, well, the podcast isn't happening today, that we're going to have to do it another day. Um, so then that just turned into another lesson of us talking about like what happens when things don't happen. And um, like we learned today, they turn out a lot better because now we're downstairs with the set. Yeah. And it's completely different than what we were going to do yesterday. Right. So that's just a live example of something that happened like in real time, like just Mm -hmm. yesterday, today, me, you know, things not going my way, but how I had to look at it a little differently. Right. And I was sharing with Ayana. I said, now you listen to the previous podcast. If any of you haven't listened to Overqualified um, episode number two, go listen. If you did, then you're already up to speed. But in that podcast, I talked about how to look at delays. Right. And some delays are in our best interest. Mm -hmm. But what would it look like if I said that? And now Ayana is in in our office while there's a delay happening and she could have seen me lash out <laughs> and it could have questioned me about my words. Like, wait, didn't you say like, how do you supposed to look at delays? Like, right. So she, that was a firsthand experience for her to see mm-hmm. a visual representation of what that looks like. And yeah, I was frustrated a little bit, but I quickly snapped back and it was like, no, today isn't the day. 
I think another practical thing with practicing that is writing things down. Yes. Yeah, because then when you write things down, you're able to go back. Mm -hmm. I have, like, six journals from, like, years ago. Okay. And that's one thing that me and a B can both agree on is that we like writing. Yes. So I have them, and I remember going back and looking. I was like, these problems ain't big at all. (laughs) See? (laughs) Exactly. You start to minimize them. Right. And, two, we get distracted by uh, the level of importance. We think certain things are more important than the others. Right. And... You have to have more of an easygoing uh, outlook on it because the next day could be a lot better. Right. Mm -hmm. How should I approach a situation where others often misunderstand me? Okay, so in a situation where you're just being misunderstood. Yeah. If you heard the first podcast, I said, I believe everyone in the world to some degree is misunderstood. Mm -hmm. I'm misunderstood, you know, by the way I look, by the way I speak, um, by the decisions I made, even the careers I wanted to pursue. I mean, all around, my my opinions, my convictions, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm very misunderstood, but it's really being okay and comfortable with yourself. Right. And coming into yourself, because you got to like you. You got to like you first, Mm -hmm. because people are going to misunderstand you. And some people may not like you based on this um, perception they have of you. Right. So you got to like you because you can allow uh, a person's misunderstanding of you to affect you. Right. Because that's not fair to you. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would see it just like cultivating a a better relationship with yourself and understanding that not everybody has all the information about you. Right. And it gives you an opportunity to educate people on who you are. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why I love traveling. I love, you know, learning languages from different cultures. Um, And why do I do that? It's because even though I, I love my people, you know, Black people, I love us, mm-hmm. and I think I think it's the fact that we we can come together and we can advocate for things, you know. Um, but another thing that I believe that's really strong and powerful when we do it, and not not like in a non genuine way, but in a genuine way, but going out to different places and really showing people who we are, because it breaks stereotypes. Right. Because I do believe we as a, even a culture are misunderstood. There's various cultures and ethnicities are, that are misunderstood. Yeah. But not everybody goes out and just like speaks to everyone else. Mm-hmm. Because I, I've been able to shatter so many stereotypes just from people um, seeing that I'm open to learning who they are. Right. Yeah. So it's just like a, and it's, it's an exchange mm-hmm. and just being comfortable with yourself, and understanding um, that everybody just doesn't have all the information about you. Right. What is the first step in overcoming fear? Hmm. The first step of overcoming fear is to do it afraid. Yep. Because I think what stops us is we're waiting till the fear goes away. Mm-hmm. We want to do it with no fear, so then we don't do it at all. Right. But that's not that's not how it works. You really have to go into it trembling, shaking, um, nervous, and just do it anyway. And then right. you realize it, it's not it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was in. Um, Indio, it was close to Palm Springs this past this past week, and we were getting in the pool. And it was funny because I really didn't want to get in. I'm like, oh my god! And I I I put my toe in the water, and I'm like, oh, it's so cold. So I I really didn't want to get in the water at all, right? Because it was just so cold, right? And but it was cold when I got in it, but then I warmed up to it. Mm-hmm. So if I would was so afraid to get in the water because I didn't want to be cold. I didn't get to experience like water aerobics because we ran around the pool and we had a good time. But it started to change. The climate changed once I got in. Right. So I think that's the first step of overcoming fear. You've heard me say it plenty of times when Mm -hmm. I say, do it until you're not afraid anymore. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So first it's, it's scary. And then you keep doing it over and over and over until you're not scared anymore. Right. And that's actually how I get over my fear of speaking because speaking isn't always so comfortable for me people think that I'm super comfortable like yeah I'm, I'm comfortable now you know but there's still a level of like you know a little, right. a little sting. I don't think that I don't think that the fear ever completely goes away. no it doesn't right. it doesn't go away but um the level of it does mm-hmm. you know sometimes it's not as bad or um you're not worried about the same things that you would be worried about before so right. you, your fear has jumped on to something else that you have to overcome right <laughs> but that also allows you to be it pushes you i guess you could say the fear does yeah it does mm-hmm. it's a it's a great driver and i i must say all fear isn't bad right you know there there's there's unhealthy fear and there's actual positive fear Mm -hmm. like the fear that we're that's built into us it helps us like if there's a snake in the grass and you hear it hissing 
you need that fear to tell you to move. Right. So that type of fear is the good fear. You you need that fear because we we press in when it comes to fear, mm-hmm. but it shouldn't stop you. Right. Yeah. Right. What are tools I can use to help motivate me? This is such a good one. Writing, writing, writing. Yeah. Speaking, speaking, speaking. Putting stuff. I mean, everyone has heard this from me a lot, Mm -hmm. but it's really putting things up in your environment. And I say that because um, I'm an advocate for journaling. I'm an advocate of just writing, you know, writing things down, reciting it over and over. But it's something unique about putting things on the wall because you have to look at it. Right. There's various steps it takes when you write things in a journal. Mm -hmm. Again, journaling is perfect. Do the journaling, do the writing on the wall and speaking, do them all. Yep. But if you think about, I know many of us are on social media and you may see, I'm going to kind of bring it home right now. So like make it a reality. So, you know, say you're on, you're on Instagram or our Facebook people, right? And you see, uh, you're on stories and you say, check, check out my link on YouTube. Well, now you got to go to the person's profile page and then you got to go to their bio Mm -hmm. and then you got to go click the YouTube link. You may have to watch an ad and say skip next to watch the video. That part. That part. (laughs) So, you know what I mean? So it's so many different steps you have to take just to watch the video. Well, when you're discouraged, you have to create a system that's less clicks. Right. So for me... If I'm discouraged in my room or even if it's in a car, you need to put a, a, a note on the visor when you pull it down. Mm-hmm. So it's easier for you to look up and say, OK, <clears throat> OK, I am overqualified for what right. scares me the most versus, oh, wait, where did I put that journal? Oh, let me go get it off the shelf. Right. So to me, it's better to put things up before you mm-hmm. um, and write things down and to keep speaking. So when you sp- when you say uh, motivating yourself, and con- it's a continual thing. We cannot live off of yesterday's encouragement. Right. It just doesn't work that way. Every day is new. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep speaking it, keep reciting it over and over. And even if you don't feel that way, you have to keep doing it because eventually you'll believe it. Your mind is listening. It's eavesdropping on what you say and what you write. Right. We had this conversation with one of our other volunteers where um, I told her that she needs to cling to encouragement. Yes, that was so good. So in my room, I have a wall where I keep all my cards, my letters, anything that has impacted me. Yeah. Yeah. Just so it's right there, I can go and look over it. I repeat those same things to myself because I think sometimes, depending on how low you're starting, you need other people to kind of pour in before you get you to pour in. So I keep letters that people wrote me years ago that are just like, Ayana, like you are so smart. And now I'm at the point where I can tell myself that and I believe that. But for a long time, the letters was all I had. It was all I had to cling to. Mm -hmm. Um, And then letters turned into tattoos and all of those type of things. So it's finding ways to keep it on you and around around you whether that's keychains yeah all that stuff she got some really cool tattoos i gotta check them out yeah. you know um and it uh, that's really great ayana because it's really about that i i take cards the cards are great mm-hmm. um i used to print out text messages right like you really have to to do it based on your learning style mm-hmm. or based on what pricks your heart so another thing i have to add before we move on to the next question mm-hmm. is wherever your eyes are the most, that's where you need to disrupt yourself with encouragement. So if your eyes are always on your phone, then you should put reminders that pop up instantaneously that says you're overqualified or you got this girl, you got this guy, like I got you. So you have to start speaking to yourself in a way that you communicate. So people who may not be on their phones often, but they're maybe homebodies or they're introverts, that's when you like really go ham and putting things on the wall so that way you can just look up and see it. So Mm -hmm. you just have to meet yourself where you're at. And another great thing about that about is the voice recording. Yes. Yeah. But like when you're having a deep conversation with friends or Come your parents on. and you record it, yes. then that's something that later on when you're driving home, you can play and just listen to that. I have several from my friends and their mothers and things like that, mm-hmm. where they're just kind of pouring life into me. And I get to replay that on the days where I feel like me telling me is not enough. That's good. Mm-hmm. Very good. So how do you start the process? You start. Mm. I think we've all started the process. I mean, we all started at zero, right? Right. So we've started already. Mm -hmm. And based on your age, that's how many years you've been starting. Right. That's how many years you're in on the journey. Um, You just started. Right. But I I do. I'm a firm believer in planning. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. But not allowing a plan to like really cripple you to to, from you moving forward. Right. Um, I say we don't fail enough. You know, mm-hmm. we're, we're really afraid of mistakes, mm-hmm. so we don't tend to, like, actually take action. And with PSL, it was, man, 
I mean, we started with like a paper label, a, a graphic that said, you are love, your journey is your story, speak out and share your message. Right. That was the start. Right. And it was on a TV tray, mm-hmm. as I spoke about in the last podcast. But you just have to start it. And it's by starting that you get to take the steps. Like you don't, you don't get the the reward of get, getting to see what's next because you didn't start. Right. So that that's actually a reward. You can't even you can't have experience if you didn't start. Mm. So that's what takes you to the next level. So we wouldn't be even as far as we are now if we didn't take the first step. Right. How do you learn not to compare yourself to other people and start celebrating them instead? Mm. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. I like that um, because we. I don't think I'll say it like this. When we admire someone, we um, highlight their admiration or our admiration for them so much that we become very small. Right. So what that's supposed to do, like inspiration is is admiration. Mm -hmm. So it's more being inspired by someone versus being jealous of them. Right. Because it's if I admire you. Now I know that I got the same thing in my own way that you have. Right. So like, for example, if I see somebody like an artist that I really respect, I'm like, wow, man, I got like, I have my own unique way of tapping into who I am too. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think it's just looking at it in a a positive light and not beating yourself up just because someone is is doing a great job. That should inspire you um, rather than discourage you. Right. How did you set an appropriate time frame for accomplishing certain goals or tasks? It's a really good question because it is something that I have wrestled with for so long because everything feels important. Right. Like, what do you do when it's like a thousand things to do? Mm. And I remember reading this article that said, you know, even though it feels uh, things feel like it's even though it may seem like there's a thousand things to do, it's only about eight to 12 Mm. that you need to do. So it's like finding what is the most important. Mm -hmm. And I actually made a list and I had like this checklist. So I really like filtered uh, all these urgencies, quote unquote urgencies through. So I said, okay, is it going to matter in the next year? Mm. Is it something that um, is going to affect how you move for the following week? You know what I mean? So I actually had to build a checklist because sometimes it does get hard when it comes to figuring out the next best thing to do. But, and sometimes Ayana seen me do this. I throw out dates. Like (laughs) I'm like, this has to be done because sometimes this is the challenge. The thing that you didn't call an urgency, then sometimes does become an urgency Mm -hmm. because you waited so long. Right. (laughs) So it's actually moving at the right beat and at the right time, but pretty much going over your schedule and saying, okay, there are certain things that are really not that important right? because it can be tied to what you think other people think about you right? Um, where versus what really needs to be done to move me forward. Right. And I think the flexibility is another key point. Yeah. To that. You got to be flexible. Mm-hmm. You got not, not to be so hard on yourself and hard on the date that um, if you miss the mark, you're like upset with yourself and then it's a shamble because right. it's really about your emotional balance as you're doing this thing, whether it's building a business um, going after going to school. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, I mean, we can go into so many different categories, but it's really not about the work, right? It's, it's the work mentally mm-hmm. because how do you stay, um, balanced emotionally while you're dealing with all these urgencies? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, for sure. What do I do if my physical <clears throat> appearance hinders me from feeling overqualified? So one, your physical appearance can never hinder you. Mm. By no means. Right. So even in that question, um, it's uh, you're, you're looking at yourself, I believe, in the wrong way. And I don't mm-hmm. want to say that negatively, but I don't know how any other way to say it. <laughs> it's like, no, you're wrong. But there's so many um, there's so many great things about you. Right. That you should highlight. And I know we all have our insecurities, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't hinder you for being overqualified. And sometimes actually your advantage. Right. I have friends that I highly respect and they're all so unique. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even my friend Sean Ross and he's albino and he's a supermodel and he's beautiful. And and he by his difference, he's been able to 
I mean, change the game. Right. He got, he has little kids like now seeing that they, they can be models. They can be speakers. They can do all they can be, Mm -hmm. um, just by him, just by his difference. Right. I mean, my friend, I mean, I can go through all my friends list and I don't really want to like call anybody specific out. I don't actually didn't want to name drop at all, but what I'm saying is that actually sometimes can be your strength. Right. And if it's something that you're not comfortable with yet, then find something you do like, like about yourself, Mm -hmm. you know? I like my eyes. I like I like my my unique style. I like my hair. Right. Um, I love my personality. So if I magnify that, mm. eventually I'm gonna love everything about me. And, I, and you know what? I used to hate how dark my knees were. Mm. I used to hate being brown skin because obviously I was teased right. in school. Right. So I wanted to wax my face because I have hair on my face, and if I wax it, I become light skin, which is terrible. But it took some time for me to come into myself and love right. everything about myself. Mm-hmm. That was the same thing. I have naturally have very big curly hair. Mm-hmm. And um, after high school, I had permed it so much that it quit growing. Oh, no. It was damaged. So after high school, I shaved all my hair off. And I was like, oh, this is the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I remember she turned me around to look in the mirror. My mom was like, I think she's just a little shocked. And I was like, oh, my oh gosh. My like, God. what did I just do? So my hair's been growing back for about four years now. And now okay. I love it. And you love it. And yeah. you can appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. And then sometimes we do stuff to ourselves because we don't know. Like right. I said, we have the wrong information. Mm-hmm. And if we just a little bit more patient with ourselves and with other people, we can see some amazing things. Right. And I think it's just a, it could always be a reminder or, or somewhat of a pusher to know that there's someone else looking toward towards you. Yeah. For encouragement. Like um, there's a lot of times where I'm like, wow, I'm going to do this because my nieces can watch this and see that it's possible. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Uh, why are certain individuals afraid to try in front of others? I think it's fear. I think it's a fear of failure because it's like you're on a pedestal and it's your first time playing an instrument that you never played before. Right. Um, and I, that's actually how I see it. It's like and for people who are, whether they're afraid to speak, whether they're afraid to play, whether they're afraid just to be themselves in front of people, mm-hmm. it just feels so daunting right? Um, to be in a public space and fail. Right. Um, and that's why people are really afraid. Uh, I think death and the fear of death and speaking Mm -hmm. are like top two. Yeah. So it's like really how people are seeing you. And I think that's something that's taught and not necessarily like you're born with it or something. Because if you look at children, Mm -hmm. they just, for the most part, they just go. They are themselves. They do not care. They'll ask you. Let me tell you something. When I was a little kid, we went over one of my mom's friend's house. Right. And she told me, she said, okay, when we, when we go in her house, she's like, she has a dog. Okay, and she knew kind of how I felt about dogs. And she says, now don't say nothing. There's, there's, she just knew. She said, don't say anything, right? So I I came in the lady's house, and can I tell this story? We were um, having dinner, and I see this big And I remember I was like probably seven years old. <laughs> and I see this big dog, and I probably was even younger. This dog comes up to the table. Now, for all the dog lovers who eat with their dogs, I'm so sorry. But for me, this was a pet peeve as a child. And the dog came up to the table and I said, <laughs> and I was so grossed out, but I didn't care. Right. You know what I mean? I, and that may be like really off like from this topic, but I said all that to say like ch- children just don't care. They, mm-hmm. ha- they don't have a filter. Right. They're very loving. But they don't they don't have no fears. I know. They, they don't they don't care. I live with my two godsons. <laughs> I came down the stairs the, on on Saturday morning with my bonnet on and Corbin he's 5. He looked at me. He said, "Anna." I said, "What's up, bud?" He said, "Are you a grandma?" I was like, "No, I ain't no grandma." <laughs> he said, "Why do you have a grandma hat on?" I was like, "That's disrespectful." <laughs> exactly, but kids they don't they don't care. Right. So, but one thing we do have to do is we have to try we have to go for it in public because it inspires hmm. other people to start so i wouldn't have known if i was afraid which i i am and i was afraid to start and afraid to fail right but look how many people have been inspired just by me having the courage to start anyway right so I, i'm really proud of that and mm-hmm. I, I just want to that's my you know ammunition and that's my encouragement to keep going because i know it's touching other people in spite of how I see myself. Right. And I yeah. think that's also how you get help. Yeah. In exactly. Certain, certain directions. If you're not willing to try in front of other people, they can't, you know, bless you with their gifts or help you along the ride, get to the next level or whatever on, that Anna. looks like. Teach, teach, girl, yeah. teach the people. <laughs> <laughs> Come 
on, let's go. Uh, how do you silence negative thoughts that say you aren't far enough? Power speaks louder. Mm. Yeah. You have to emphasize the voices that are positive to be louder than what is negative mm-hmm. because it's a screaming match in your mind. Um, when it comes to, you know, everything about life, you have an opinion about everything. Right. And I, I've spoken about this um, in various videos that I'm not even sure if I shared either of them. So I don't care. I'll say it again. We have a positive Patty and negative Nancy. Okay. Everybody has one. And for the <laughs> men, you got positive Pete and negative Nate. Okay. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So each of them are at war with each other. So negative Nan is always talking in your ear about how you're not going to be, you're not mm. going to make it. You're not good enough. You know what I mean? Like, what did you do? I'm right. so disappointed yeah. in you. you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And positive Patty, she's the, op- she's so optimistic. She, she wants the best for you because she is you. You right. know what I mean? She's right. the purest form of you, but they're always at war with each other. And my thing is when things happen, and there's like a negative thought, a negative voice. I get, lo- I have to get loud, right? Because even in an argument, like who wins, who wins the argument in the screaming match, right? It's usually the loudest. Mm-hmm. So our problem is, um, I'm sorry, what we fail to realize sometimes is that we let that negative voice just talk us off right. the ledge, and we don't interject, and we don't scream back at it and tell it to be quiet and sit down. Because listen, right. this is what I'm I'm great at. I can do this because it's already within me. So you just have to create that environment for yourself right. mentally right. that you're highlighting the things that are best about you. I think that's another comfort. I think negative in this world that we live in is so comfortable it's more natural yeah because that was like the story of how i came here Mm -hmm. when i came to interview it was so much more natural for me to be like yeah (laughs) i'm not gonna turn this in i'm just gonna stay home and then coming here oh let me tell you positive patty was excited (laughs) okay tell 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 the people the story Anna. okay so i met b at a um a meeting that was held at Platt College where I go to school yeah um we go we talk about the curriculum things like that what we can change what we can add and so um my friend Yvonne was like I want you to meet her so I knew she was coming so I was like oh here we go like I'm gonna say hi we'll right. go home right. and then B comes in and I I didn't know her but I was like okay that must be her right because Yvonne was like she's just cool person blah 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 I was like okay cool so then she sits like right in front of me so the whole time I'm like Ayana we're not saying nothing and then I was like yes we are no we're not yes we are <laughs> the whole meeting I have to answer people's questions because I was the only student in the group so I answered their questions about um the book work and not mm-hmm. and then after I'm like okay Yvonne I have to go to class and she was like oh but I want you to meet B and I was like <laughs> Okay. Right. Negative Nan. Okay. Right. Negative Nan was like, you should have just left. So you had to go to the bathroom and never came back. But I wanted my chocolates. They was giving out boxes of chocolates. Okay. And I wanted it. So that's why I said I was leaving. <laughs> so then I was like, I went home and B was like, check out the website and you can put in the application there. So I'm looking at the website. I was like, I'm not going to do this. And Positive Pat was like, no, like, yes, you are. You're going to do this. Right. And she, I was like, no, I'm not. And then I finally put in the request whatever i came here we're talking and i had a, a like a five ar- i live five minutes away so it was like mm, a five minute argument here about what i was gonna say i was like we're not talking about we're not talking about how we used to go to f- school for youth ministry <laughs> we're not talking about that we take pictures i said we're just here to clean some shoes <laughs> mm. and leave and then um talking to be in the office and she's like well what do you do i see you do this this and this and then for some reason positive pam was all bold and she just said everything and yeah he was like oh you used to go to school for youth ministry she's like well we're gonna use that <laughs> i remember i was like okay bye and she shut the door i was like wow exactly <laughs> i just threw myself under the bus hello but positive patty got the last word right and that's the key is to allow her to get the last word or him right. positive pete get the last word because uh negative nan and negative nate they can walk you into some dark places mm-hmm. that you don't want to go to. Just you know? because it's so comfortable. I think had exactly. I had I done the comfortable thing and not said anything and said that I was cool with cleaning shoes and not talked about the things that I've been through or have done or any of those things, it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been this. Right. It wouldn't have been this. It wouldn't have been any photography. You, would, you wouldn't have been stretched in writing mm-hmm. because Ayana has so many. She has done so much um, being here. 
I mean, she has been stretched in ways that she knew not. Okay. Right. But it's amazing. And if she didn't allow, you know, positive Patty to take the lead. Right. I don't think she would have discovered what she has so and far. I think that's another, if we jump back for fear for a second, that's mm-hmm. another thing is the stretching part is scary. Yeah. Because I remember when you told me, okay, you're going to write these donor tags. I was mm-hmm. like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> so it's literally getting outside of your comfort zone, your own box, and yeah. saying, okay, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to do it. And even if it doesn't work out, even if it's bad, at least I did it. Right. And most of the time, that's when you surprise yourself. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Proud of you, girl. Thank you. Thank you. How do you handle not getting the gig or opportunities you wanted? Well, you have to realize there there is something better for you. Mm. What you don't get, that means it wasn't yours. Right. Um, And I'm a firm believer of that, especially if you do your best and you show up with excellence and to just have the values of, you know, having your integrity intact and your character and shape and just knowing you did your best. Mm -hmm. It's not yours. And what is yours is so much bigger than what you, quote unquote, didn't get. Right. How do you celebrate the losses? Man, y'all got to get a journey wall. Okay. Y'all got to see your steps on the wall and mm-hmm. see how far you've come. Um, celebrate loss. I think that actually goes with the, the last question you asked. Um, right. Just knowing that. And not only that, uh, it depends on how you see a loss. Um, and I say it as using failures for footstools. Right. So what you lost, what is a loss, wasn't yours to begin with. Right. Or something that you think you missed the mark. It's just a lesson. Yeah. There are no losses. Mm-hmm. They're only just lessons. A learning experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think because most time when people think they take a loss, that's when they want to quit. Right. So if you can just change it from, okay, I didn't get it, but what did I do right? What did I do wrong? Mm-hmm. Go into the next one the same way. Even if you lose that one, you still have a better experience to get there. It's true. Mm-hmm. It's true. And I, I really, man, when it comes to quitting, I had a new revelation that what you are truly passionate about, you can't quit. Right. You cannot quit. Mm. Not, there's things that you quit. There's things that you can quit. Right. And you probably have no issue with quitting those. But there's a a specific, unique thing that you just cannot quit and you cannot let go no matter how hard it gets. Mm -hmm. And that is a thing that is like tied to your passion. Right. So just know like if you quit things, don't beat yourself up because those things may not have been in your best interest or for you. But there is something that you cannot quit. It'll always sneak back around. That's right. Yeah. That's what I learned when we had a conversation with one of the other volunteers. Mm hmm. And we were just trying to pour life into her, all those things. And I was like, man, I told myself I wasn't going to do this. Yeah. Then, and then here you are. <laughs> that part. <laughs> exactly. And sometimes, like, we talk ourselves out of a lot of things. Right. But you can talk yourself into mm-hmm. great things. Mm-hmm. And that's where the positive Patty, you know, come in. She, right. She's strong. I'm telling you, I got to adopt it because you get to really understand the the war that you have in you. Right. But um, you can talk yourself into some really great things. Even if you just ask yourself, well, what if in the positive? I think we're yeah. so quick to ask what if in the negative. negative. True. So if you switch that and just ask what if in the positive, you're going to get such a different response right and a different way about going about things right and ask yourself Mm -hmm. you know if not now when right if not you who right and that's talking to yourself because you gotta question you have to do q a's on yourself and i think that's what helps me mentally is when i start asking questions i go through great limbs to like if i'm going through stuff i would write down how Mm -hmm. i feel in question form Mm -hmm. and then i go back and i answer it right and i allow my answers to minister to my present Yep. And then I can step into it as if I just went to counseling with somebody else. Because you have two people in you, like I said. Am so I, you, you can counsel yourself. You can. You just have to give yourself time to put it on paper and start to like knock things out and digest what you're going through. And you, right. you'll be surprised how powerful you are. You really got to think about what you're thinking about at that point. That's it. Mm-hmm. You have to. You got to think how you're thinking. Think mm-hmm. about what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. So how do you do that in in a simple form? Because as you say it, Mm -hmm. it sounds very complex, like thinking about what you're thinking about. Yeah. So how do you break that down? What does that look like? So it looks like when your heart is beating, Mm -hmm. when you feel discouraged and you feel anxiety because you didn't accomplish what you wanted to do, Mm. you have to pay attention to your heartbeat and focus on you feeling pressure and ask yourself, why are you feeling that way? Mm. And 
because we not we, we overlook it and we don't always question ourselves when we're feeling a certain way. We just act out of a response. Mm. But if you practice it, you'll be surprised how you can change how you feel by just questioning and pausing. Like, I promise you, it sounds really weird and, and complex, but like even when I'm getting ready to speak or do something and my heart is beating out of my chest, it depends on what type of engagement it is. It depends on how the level of anxiety I have. And I'm like, I put my hand over my chest and I feel, I'm like, why are you, why is your heart beating so fast? Right. Because then you get to tell yourself why you're feeling the way you are. Mm. Then you start to, that's the truth about you. So then you say, well, be, because I'm, I'm nervous. That's a simple answer. Okay. Well, well, why are you nervous? Because I don't think I prepared. Mm. Well, what is being prepared? Because you've been prepared all your life. Right. You, you're overqualified. Mm. So what is, why are you so nervous? And then when you start to shut your own self down, okay. then that's when you, you switch. And you're like, oh, well, yeah, why am I nervous? I have no reason to be. Boom, and you, you can change. Mm. Pulling a personal Oprah. That's it. <laughs> that's it. You have, everybody has a personal Oprah in them. They just have to practice it. Right. We're not practicing enough. We're mm. listening to um, podcasts. We're listening to sermons. We're listening to people teach us. We're listening to to people at therapy we're listening to counselors but we're not always applying what people say right and that's the part it's like you you don't need not one more sermon that part like it, it's good for you right it's good for you but you need to apply the last 20 you heard mm. the like, last ones you took when, notes on when you gonna put it to work that part yeah mm. so i've even done that i, I heard like a made something so like you know you hear something a good good word right you don't want to let go and you almost want to play Ooh. it back but you kind of get because usually you get distracted when you go to it's really hard to play something back twice because something else tries to come in and distract you, right? Mm. But I'm like, no, I want to eat off this word because I can apply this to my life. Right. And if I hear something else that's on a totally different topic, I won't apply what I just heard. Mm. So in this this digital space, in this age where we're, we're so open to um, information, we don't really have time to apply it because we're so busy consuming more. Right. So going off of that, how do you create consistency? You have to find a way to focus on the thing that is pulling at your heart. Mm. And when you find that thing that is pulling at your heart, that is worth you giving your time to. Right. You can get up and do it every day Mm. and not uh, allow other things to distract it. And I know that's hard when you talk about being able to do a bunch of things at once because people may be out there and they say, well, how do I know? Because I'm good at so many things. Right. And I don't know which one I need to focus on. And believe me, I was in the same position. And that's why um, I referenced the journey wall because it's not just the steps. It's actually, it was everything I had in mind. Right. And I put them in a row. Before anything grew, I literally had a post-it note for every interest I had. Mm. And I had my own business. Then I had the God dream. You know what I mean? Right. Then I had, um, you know, author, speaker. I was never, I would, didn't feel close to any of that stuff. But I put them mm. all in a, a vertical row. Because I, I'm a creative being, I can do a lot. Right. So I was confused. Like, I don't know what, which one to start, which one I should give my time to. Because I know my time is valuable and I don't want to waste it. Mm. So I said to myself, whichever one exceeds the other with steps, Meaning I can't, I can't go to bed without going to buy a black journal because I know it fits in the branding of PSL Mm. and I'm excited about that. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, oh, if it's music or if it's speaking or whatever, like, oh, put the gig up, put, put the audition you got, you know, put, so then you start to see these different steps and one will always exceed the other Mm. because there's a lot of things you can do, but they're not all going to explode at the same time. Right. So then there's one that's going to be a trigger to the next. So you just have to find the one that's going to spark everything else. Right. So that's what I did with PSL. And mm. I start to see Power Speaks Louder grow. So then I was able to be consistent mm. because I had a visual representation. Again, writing it down and putting it on the wall. Right. If I didn't write anything down, I would be so confused right now. Right. I wouldn't know what to start, what I did. If I made, I'll be so upset because I feel like I didn't get anywhere. Right. And I will be very ungrateful. Mm. You know, if I didn't track my steps. So that's how you stay consistent is focusing on the the very thing that you are called to do. And then just giving yourself at it and going the extra mile and just trying your best to be excellent at it. Right. And you will look up and mm. see the fruit of your consistency. Right. 
So what keeps you steadfast, solid, stable, and secure? Ayanna, how did you get those questions? Because I could have sworn some of them was removed. <laughs> Look, I put back up on the paper. I was like, wait, with some of these questions, I thought, no, that's perfect. So how do you stay solid, secure, and stef- stable, and steadfast? Mm-hmm. By seeing, uh, I believe, not to get too spiritual on y'all, but the faithfulness of the Father. Mm-hmm. Literally, just seeing how faithful um, your steps have been, right. even when you didn't feel like you were faithful. Mm-hmm. And when you constantly see how qualified you are, and when you have a challenge and you overcome it, and it constantly is, you know, you have a victory each time, then that's just a notch on your belt. Right. That you cannot be moved when something similar comes to try to threaten you again. Mm -hmm. So we tend to think it's something different, but they're all the same. Right. Like, I believe there's no new tricks of the um, of our opposer. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Out there with the evil. Right. Um, There's no new trick. They're all the same. They just Mm -hmm. they come packaged and they kind of look a little different, but they're not. They're not. They're they're all the same. So the way I stay solid. It's just remembering when I overcame things, mm. remembering when I felt a specific way in that past and now I'm on to something new. So I'm like, why is it this cycle if I come out as a victor on the other side every time mm. so I can stay solid and, and unmovable? Right. I think that's another great thing to point out is just looking back. Yeah. Because as I have like journals from when I was like a freshman in high school mm-hmm. and the other day I found them because I was cleaning up my closet and going back I remember writing uh, prayers or just notes to my older self and it was like I hope that you're you're bold mm. and back then I didn't really know what bold meant but looking at bold now to me I am bold enough because I do all these things or I literally walk out the house with my hair half comb <laughs> and no makeup on. Right. It's bold enough for me. But right. Even looking back at those letters and being like praying, like I hope my older self is somebody who's comfortable in her own skin or yes. somebody who um, helps other people, those type of things. Mm-hmm. And looking back, I'm able to keep going forward because I know that I'm growing. That's right. Right. Because I'm coming into what I hoped I would one day be. And yeah. even if I'm not, I could be someone who's maybe like I'm a little bold, but not always bold. Well, mm-hmm. you're bolder than you were last year that's true. or a year before. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's really good. Way. That's very good. What helps you believe that you are called to your dream in the midst of discouragement? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, what helps me believe that is that, amen, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. 11. Mm-hmm. For I know the thoughts that I have and the plans that I have for you. Um, that right there, I think there's certain things that we can stand on right within our convictions. And, but then there's something when you know you're here for a reason, you didn't just pop out of thin air, right? Like you're, you're really called to something special. Mm-hmm. And I think that concept and that just that mindset is enough to carry you through life. Right. It's just to know. And because you're going to have different voices that speak against that mm-hmm. and you just have to find that to stand on to know that you matter right and that you you are called to do amazing things and the thing is the fact that you have breath in your lungs the fact that you get to wake up every morning we overlook that and we yep. think it's just so basic that you know oh yeah like i woke up but yeah yeah right but there are people who didn't mm-hmm. you know you couldn't even complain if you weren't alive mm-hmm. You know, so we have to be more appreciative of having breath in our lungs and still have an opportunity to, to discover more about who we are. Right. And I think that's another point of clinging to encouragement again yeah. is finding those ways to when you feel like you're in a good spot to mm-hmm. hang things everywhere. Places. I mean, nobody knows you better than you. True. So the fact is you have to put them places to where you're like, okay, when I get in a depressed state or when I get discouraged, I'm most likely to be in my bedroom. Then your bedroom should be plastered with everything that encourages you so be. that there's no, there's not a lot of room for you to feel discouraged in that point. It's so true. And maybe for people who may not have a bedroom or right. they're not in a space that it has a, a physical or walls, right. you know, finding unique ways to encourage yourself. And like I said, like you can do, if you're even on the street, Mm -hmm. and you don't have that or if you're sleeping in your car right there's ways there's a there's a guy i think his name is like millionaire pa and he was homeless and he was writing um positive 
affirming words on the ceiling of his car and he spoke them every single day mm-hmm. and he ended up coming out of and now he's like a motivational speaker all over the world and mm-hmm. does his thing right so he was like living in his car and he was you know reciting the things that's not a house that's not a room but he found his own unique way right to remind himself and i know we talk about that a lot and it may seem repetitive but it is so true and it's really i i can only teach what i know right so if i keep saying that there's a reason because i used it and it works Mm -hmm. (laughs) so yeah that's another way to do it what is a culture of gratefulness a culture of gratefulness is what we're talking about is is you know besides putting things up it's like training yourself on how you speak Mm. um and just appreciating that life can be so different right and it is different for a lot of other people People are going through their own journey. So I think it's like literally walking around and trying to find the beauty in everything that you look at. Right. Nature is so Mm. beautiful. Nature just shows the wonders um, and the possibilities. So like if you go out and look out from a mountain and see, it's just just finding a way to appreciate things because there's so many little things that irk you Mm -hmm. and really drive you into it can be depression or just you living a frustrated life and it doesn't have to be that way so it's really about focus worrying is literally meditating on the wrong thing right so if you can think about ponder speak about what is right with you then you do create a culture of gratefulness Mm -hmm. because like you know what i actually i'm actually happy to be alive i'm actually that i'm happy that i have clothes on my body i get to wake up and do what i love if i have a nine to five job listen I, i can work Right. You know what I mean? I can learn Mm -hmm. because the people in your job, some people may get on your nerves, but there are people that could be for you in there. You can meet amazing people. Right. Even one of our career services advisor, she says that in the job, not everything will be perfect. Even when you work a job that you think is perfect, there's going to be somebody who gets on your nerve. True. But she also said that those are the people that you get to use in your next interview. Yes. And saying like, well, how did you get through this? And you're like, oh, well, I had to deal with so-and-so down the road and those type of things. So it's all a learning and a growing process, which I think is something to be grateful for. It's true. If it ain't Sally, it'll be Sue. If it ain't Sue, it'll be you. Right. Mm -hmm. I get that from S. Hunter. (laughs) (laughs) Every, every place you go to, it'll be the same person because that is your test. Right. Yeah. So in the last podcast, you talked about receiving success Mm -hmm. instead of achieving success. Do you want to expound on that a little bit? Yeah. Because success is in us. Mm. We, we think that everything we're looking for is outside of us. And that's why we're not pleased. That's why the car didn't make you happy. That's why the apartment you got or the house or the spouse or the boo mm. or whoever didn't make right. you happy. Because, right. And we're still searching. We're so hungry for more. And we're looking for we're looking for um, we're looking for more validation, mm. more love, more peace, all this joy, but it's not found in the things that are exterior. It's found internally. Right. And it's, it's there. Mm. So I'm already successful before right. people know who I am, before people listen to the podcast, before mm. like, I'm just sharing my gift. I'm just, you know, putting myself out there and discovering who I'm called to be. Right. But at the same time, I don't need anything outside of me to make me successful. Mm -hmm. So when I say it's received because we have it already, but we're distracted. Right. So you have to receive something there. There is a handout. There is there's mercy. There's grace. But at the same time, we don't think that there is. Right. Because we're so busy trying to work for everything. Mm -hmm. So it's like I need to do something in exchange for that love. Right. So I got to work for it. Right. No, no, no. Not the love I know of. Right, that part. Yeah, no. So it, it's already there. So I believe it's, it's to receive it, not to achieve it. Right. And that's a good point to, to measure, to see how you measure success. Yeah. Most people, when you say success, they're thinking money or fame or how right. many people you have. And so it's like a thing of success is just overcoming something. So the fact that you can look back on your life and see all of the things, major and small, mm-hmm. that you've overcome shows that you've been successful in more ways than you give yourself credit for. Yeah. And I remember saying, you know, success is when a product performs its purpose. Right. You know, so we're we're the most fulfilled when we're doing what we were made to do Mm. and what we are here to do. And that's why we're we're looking, like I said, we're looking for so many things. 
but it's really like happiness is found in finding your purpose. Right. It really is. Like right. it's, you haven't lived life yet until you found something that you are so excited to wake up for. Mm. And I know some people may not feel that way yet, but it's out there right. and it's a beautiful journey to discover it. And when you find it, it's, it's worth the time it took to, to discover that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what is the difference of feeling overqualified and being arrogant? So it's interesting. That question is funny because um, arrogant is to like exaggerate a, a ability of yours. Right. Um, but no one on the earth is 100% certain of mm. themselves. So that's just um, my way of feeling empowered and confident could be to someone else seem arrogant. Mm. Because you could be looking at me in my now right now. Right. And I'm saying I'm overqualified. Mm. And I'm saying that, oh, my business is a leading company in the world. That part. And you're looking at me like, uh, when? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll be. See, but it could be arrogant to you, but I'm seeing something differently. Right. So I don't I don't mean, uh, I don't know if that question means like arrogance as in rude or, but no, someone, you have the right to feel and to be overqualified. Right. You do. Mm-hmm. And I think we all should see ourselves that way because I can't. I need to know that I do have what it takes. If if overqualified is weird for many people, mm-hmm. it's you are more than enough. Right. That's another way. That's what that means. Mm-hmm. You are more than enough. Mm-hmm. So you can look arrogant to me, but you can be toiling inside. Right. And I feel like you're good enough. Mm-hmm. But the way you come off to me, I'm like, oh, you're arrogant. Right. That's not true. Right. You don't know everything. Right. It's just, you're just exaggerating. You may have to exaggerate something of you. Just mm. so you can walk in the fullness of who you are. Right. Because you didn't see it yet. Right. Yeah. I think it's also in people's actions. Yeah. I mean, the way people say things, we all come from different backgrounds, from different, we're all raised differently. Yeah. And study have shown that you can be raised in the same house and still everybody turn out differently. True. So it's just more of, not only do you listen to the way they speak or, or whatever, but it's also actions. Yeah. I mean, you can tell when somebody's being genuine and when they're not. That's true. Mm-hmm. It's very true, and I think um, that's it's perfect because we got we just have to come into. <clears throat> everyone is in the discovery, right? Everyone is on a journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think when I speak about we all not having the information, right? <laughs> it mm-hmm. kind of can silence a couple of voices, right? You know, um, so I would I would look at it as that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ayana. So my question for you is: right. What does overqualified mean to you? Man, overqualified for me, um, personally, when I look at myself, is just being content Mm -hmm. um, in where I'm at and where I am. That's good. Um, I'm a big person of when I was younger. I had these big dreams of where I was going to be by the time I'm 20 or 25. Mm. And when you're 10, like 20, you're old, (laughs) right? You're supposed to have your life by then. And coming to this agreement to where we're not in the same spot, um, just in different places for me it's being content in the fact that i'm where i'm supposed to be right all my story is coming together full circle um for something that's greater than me something that i really don't have any control over i'm just at a point of saying yes that's good Mm -hmm. that's so good and i'm so proud of you well thank you because you've walked in here and you've done like I've, i've watched you come into this beautiful woman in such a short period of time. Mm-hmm. And I know you have, like, your story is amazing, and we'll get into that at another time, but you, I mean, you exude service, you exude beauty, um, you exude purpose. Right. And whatever you've been going through, like, you, this woman knows what she's talking about, okay, y'all, <laughs> just letting y'all know. And she knows how to laugh. That's one thing I really like about you. Like, <laughs> like you, she brings the fun she brings the fun to everything she does. And that's another thing to add and to remember is to enjoy your journey. Right. Really enjoy it. When mm-hmm. we make it like work, when we make it feel um, too businessy, mm. um, it just too much like a job. It just really right. takes the fun out of it. Right. And a part of all of our personalities, we just want to enjoy life. Right. We want to have peace and joy, you know? I think another thing just to add before we go is that people should just say, 
um, yes more and finding yeah. your heart project. Like for people who aren't sure what their passion is or what they need to do. Yeah. Because I remember somebody said, oh, I have a pa- This is my pa- um, passion project. And it, um, hers was dealing with sex trafficking, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. I have a heart for that. But it wasn't necessarily my heart passion. So for me, I was like, man, I got to find my heart passion. Like, what is it? So that led me on a journey to saying yes, mm-hmm. which then led me here, um, which is why I stay here. All the time. That's right. I've been here every day this week. Oh my gosh, she's been here every <laughs> single day. And I'm like, wow, Ayana, I'm so right. proud. But, but when it becomes your passion project or something that you generally enjoy doing, the time isn't an issue. Right. Right? Like, it's like, I came here sometimes, you know, like, I'll just come. i am like, you, you need help? <laughs> just go pull up, you know? So it's yeah. just about saying yes to new adventures because especially if you maybe aren't sure what the next step is, if you just say yes to this, that can change your whole life for tomorrow. It's so true. And it's like a domino effect. You never know where that yes will lead you. Mm-hmm. So say yes more often. Walk into your um, purpose with boldness right. and with confidence because you are overqualified for what scares you the most. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I really enjoyed this conversation, and stay tuned for more. We value our PSL podcast listeners and want to hear the words of the people we serve. Tell us about the podcast you enjoy and how often you listen to them. We've created a quick survey for you to help PSL craft a great podcast about the things you love. To fill out the survey, visit www.powerspeakslouder.com forward slash feedback, or you can click the link we've provided in the show notes for this episode. Thank you so much.